This video is brought to you by Captivating History. In this video, we will explore one of the largest empires of the Americas and the ancient world, the Aztecs. Who were they? Where did they come from? How did they live? What regions did they conquer? And how did their civilization perish? Who were the Aztecs and where did they come from? The Aztecs were considered a Mesoamerica civilization. Mesoamerica is the area of current-day Central America, extending from northern central Mexico through the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. Their capital, Tenochtitlan, or Mexico Tenochtitlan, was founded in 1325 CE in the Valley of Mexico, within the region that is Mexico City today. Historians believe the civilization was likely related to the Toltecs, a civilization that grew to prominence in northern Mexico in the 11th and 12th centuries. It is unclear why the Aztecs chose to move to the Valley of Mexico. However, Aztec mythology describes their migration south, as well as the founding of the city of Tenochtitlan, as being brought about by divine intervention. As legend has it, the Aztec god Huitzilopochtli came to the priest Cuauhtli and commanded him to build their new home where they would find an eagle perched on top of a Tenochtli cactus. Shortly following this vision, Kuaukuatl minions are said to have encountered the omen, prompting Kuaukuatl and his people to settle in that territory. It's important to note that the Aztec people didn't identify as Aztecs. This is the name historians use to describe the empire formed by the Nahuatl-speaking people who called themselves the Mexica. The word Aztec was derived from the term Azteca, which means people from Aztlan believed to be a place in northern Mexico where the semi-nomadic Mexica had originated. Although this was not the name the Aztecs used to describe themselves, it became the historically accepted designation. Government, City-States, and Expansion Aztec civilization can be divided into two time periods, the Early Aztec Era and the Late Aztec Era. Many of the city-states that would become a part of the Aztec Empire were founded at the beginning of the 12th century. The beginning of the late Aztec era is usually associated with the founding of Mexico Tenochtitlan in 1325. However, when the Mexica arrived, there was little available land left unsettled. Different tribes and ethnic groups occupied the territory, but over time and through conquest and alliances, many of these tribes would assimilate into the Aztec culture. The political system of the Aztecs was despotism. Kings and quasi-kings ruled over city-states and interacted with one another. Sometimes city-states would be cooperative with each other, typically via trade and military alliances, but often they fought one another to establish dominance or settle other grievances. Relationships between city-states were ever-changing and unpredictable. The Aztec Empire is best understood as a political alliance between some 50 or more city-states that occupied the Valley of Mexico. The primary political foundation that bound them was a system of taxes and tributes designed to raise the status of the sovereigns and the nobility, ultimately oppressing and pacifying the commoners. The Golden Age of the Aztec Empire began in 1428 with the formation of the Triple Alliance between Mexico Tenochtitlan, Texcoco, and Tlacopan. This represents the most robust form of political cooperation between the city-states in the Valley of Mexico. The economic and military might of these combined city-states propelled the Aztecs to eventually gain control over virtually all settlements in the Valley of Mexico and the regions beyond. This alliance, however, was born of necessity. In 1426, hostilities between the Mexica, or Aztecs, and the Tepanecs, a city-state with considerable influence in the Valley of Mexico, intensified. The Tepanecs attempted a blockade of Tenochtitlan, to extract higher taxes and tributes, and simultaneously were engaged in hostilities with the Akalhua in Texcoco. When the Tepanex forced Netzelhuacoyotl, the sovereign of Texcoco, to flee the city, the Mexico leader, Moctezuma, seized the opportunity to ally the Texcoco to defeat their common enemy. Moctezuma rallied the support of the city-state of Tlacopan, whose citizens had grown intolerant of the Tepanex's heavy-handed governance. War broke out in 1428, and the combined forces of Texcoco, Tlacopan, Tenochtitlan, and a fourth city-state, Huetzalcinco, proved to be the undoing of the Tepanex. 
With the Tepanex defeated, the Mexica were positioned to fill that power void and become the dominant influence in the Valley of Mexico. Tenochtitlan, being the largest and wealthiest of the three city-states, with the biggest and most formidable military, became the obvious choice as the capital of the newly formed Imperial Alliance. The leader of Tenochtitlan became the de facto emperor of the new empire of the Triple Alliance. After joining forces, the newly formed Aztec Empire quickly set its sights on gaining control over the entire Valley of Mexico. Campaigns throughout the 1430s brought the cities of Chalco, Zocamilco, Cuitlahuac, and Coyoacan under the influence of the Triple Alliance. Following these conquests, the Aztecs looked further south, advancing into the modern-day state of Morelos. There they would conquer Cuanahuac, the modern-day city of Cuernavaca, and Huaxtepec. In 1440, the first emperor of the Aztec Empire died, and Moctezuma I was chosen as his successor. Moctezuma's reign was an important period in Aztec history. He began construction on some of the most important Aztec temples, including the Great Temple of Tenochtitlan. In 1458, Moctezuma I began military campaigns that would further dramatically expand the sphere of Aztec influence in the region. The Aztecs extended their control well beyond the Valley of Mexico, establishing dominance throughout most of the modern-day states of Morelos and Huizaca. Throughout the 100 years of the Triple Alliance, the Aztecs converted their civilization from a loose collection of semi-aligned but often warring city-states into one of the largest empires in the New World and the largest empire to have existed in Mesoamerica. Their systems of expansion and consolidation were steady and directed. Emperors who expanded their territory were followed by leaders who consolidated and organized their newly acquired lands and cities. And by the end of this period, the Aztecs controlled a vast expanse of territory populated by some three to four million people. Social Classes and Hierarchy Social classes and hierarchy dramatically influenced the life of the Aztec citizen. Rights, duties, and privileges were all determined because of one's social standing. However, when looking closely at the lives of the most distinct classes, upward mobility was possible. Even a slave was not predestined to that social station for their entire life and could achieve emancipation and upward social mobility. The sovereign, the dignitaries, and the nobles. The ruling classes of Aztec society can be crudely stratified into three groups. At the top was the sovereign, given the title Tlatuani. Each city-state had its own Tlatuani. Below the sovereign were the dignitaries, usually close relatives or friends of the sovereign. Underneath the dignitaries were the nobility. These three groups were responsible for the administrative, bureaucratic, and gubernatorial duties of the empire. Commoners the life of a commoner in Aztec civilization was dedicated nearly entirely to work. From the moment of birth, gender roles were ascribed to children. Males were expected to grow up to be warriors and work in the same occupation as their fathers. Females were expected to serve more domestic roles, such as cooking, cleaning, weaving, and bearing children. Because an Aztec commoner was expected to work, they were introduced to this way of life at an early age. According to the Codex Mendoza, one of the most significant and primary sources of recorded information of the Aztec Empire, by the age of five, boys were already carrying firewood and other goods to nearby marketplaces, and girls were already being taught how to hold a spindle and spin. Landless Peasants How one became landless is hard to discern, especially since it was part of Aztec custom to grant each person a tract of land to work so they could pay their taxes and tributes required by the local lord. However, with warfare being a near-constant occurrence, and people being displaced as their towns and cities were conquered, this landless class did indeed grow as the empire advanced. Slaves The lowest class in Aztec society was the slaves. While the life of the slave was by no means comfortable and luxurious, it was far better than the forms of slavery that would come to exist in the Americas with the formation of European colonies. Accounts from the Spanish explorers expressed surprise at the rather benevolent treatment of slaves. As mentioned previously, the Aztecs had social constructs in place that granted slaves the capability of raising their social station and achieve emancipation. 
arrival of the Spanish, and the decline of the empire. With the landing of Christopher Columbus in the West Indies in 1492, the Spaniards were officially the first Europeans in the New World and were eager to expand their influence into the Americas. They had heard of a great empire in central Mexico with stories of great riches, and the Spanish crown commissioned a Spanish conquistador, Hernán Cortés, with the mission of the expedition. Shortly before he set sail for Mexico, the Spanish crown rescinded its support for the mission, but Cortés set sail regardless. In 1519, Cortés arrived with about 500 soldiers on the coast of Mexico, near the modern-day city of Veracruz. They were greeted by messengers from the Aztec emperor, Moctezuma, who had heard of these strange men exploring the coast. Moctezuma was cautious of these new strangers and thought they might be gods. Upon Cortés's arrival, the Aztecs greeted him with offerings of gifts and gold as a way of forging peaceful relations. When given the gold, the Spaniards reportedly went crazy, and the encounter confirmed the riches of the empire and served to strengthen only the resolve of Cortés to conquer these people. Cortés began his march inland, making allies along the way. Cortés first allied with the Totonacs, then the Tlaxcala, a powerful city-state that had resisted the control of the Triple Alliance. And after an initial conflict, Cortés convinced the Tlaxcalans to join him on his journey inland towards Tenochtitlan. When Cortés finally forged his way into central Mexico, he had several thousand troops under his command. When Cortés arrived in Tenochtitlan, Moctezuma welcomed him by putting him up in what was the equivalent of a royal palace. Cortés responded by taking Moctezuma prisoner and ruled Tenochtitlan under the guise he was acting on the behest of the Aztec emperor. In 1520, Cortés received word from his scouts that a Spanish expedition had been sent to Mexico to arrest him for setting sail against the wishes of the crown. He mobilized half of his forces and left Tenochtitlan to ward off the threat. Upon returning to the Aztec capital, Cortés found that tensions had risen in the city that placed him and his men in great danger. They planned to flee the city and retreated to the mountains in Tlaxcala. In these months, Cortés regrouped considerably. He marched again in Tenochtitlan with some 700 Spanish soldiers and approximately 70,000 native troops. They laid siege to the city for months, cutting off all sources of fresh water and stopping all shipments of food. This assault, combined with diseases such as smallpox, wreaked havoc on the city, decimating its population and weakening the city's military resolve. Eventually, on August 13, 1521, Kuautmak, who had replaced Moctezuma as emperor, was captured, and the Spaniards claimed victory over Tenochtitlan, thus ushering in the demise of this great civilization. To the uninitiated, it may appear that Cortés defeated the great Aztec Empire with little more than a few hundred Spanish soldiers. However, his forces were much larger. Long-standing rivalries, combined with resentment toward taxes and tributes imposed by the Aztecs, made it easy for Cortés to gain allies in the fight to take down Tenochtitlan. That and illnesses such as smallpox, measles, the mumps, influenza, and many other diseases, which were alien to Mesoamerica, ultimately overwhelmed the unimmunized Aztec Empire. Europeans had been exposed to these diseases for centuries and had developed immunities, while the Aztecs had not. Hundreds of thousands of them would die from these afflictions in a short window of time. This silent weapon of mass destruction proved one of the primary reasons the Spaniards seized control of such a powerful empire in such a short while. To discover more about the Aztec Empire, check out our book, Aztec History, a captivating guide to the Aztec Empire, mythology, and civilization. It is available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.